Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video I have some Dollar Tree Farmhouse porch DIYs and I hope you will stay tuned to the end of the video so I can show you how I incorporated them into my porch. For project number one, we are starting off with two of these wire hanging baskets from Dollar Tree. Remove the chain from both of these as well as those clips on the end. And then we're going to flip them over and place one on top of the other and line the wires up where they meet in between each other. So one will sit slightly higher than the other, but you want to just make sure that you line them up in between the bottom rack and then pull those tabs that are on the bottom on the outside. To hold these two wire baskets together, I'm going to use some black zip ties and I'm going to place one opposite of each other and then I will twist that around and do one opposite each other on the other side. And then I do end up using a fifth zip tie just to make sure that both of these baskets are nice and tight and secured together. Then I will flip that over and I'm going to apply two zip ties to the top centerpiece where that round circle is. And I'm just going to put one on opposite sides of one another just to get that nice and tight. I'm using one of these round wood circles, and I believe I picked this up at Walmart. They're just a couple of dollars for I think five or six in a pack. And then I am using um, a very large bead. Now I get my beads from Amazon, which I have them listed in my Amazon store, and I will try to link these wood rounds for Walmart in my description box if I can. I'm applying the bead to that wood round with some E6000 and just a little bit of hot glue. I'm just going to place that right in the center and then I can attach, well before I attach it, I'm going to fill that top hole in with some hot glue and I'm just going to fill that in, let the glue set and then continue that until it gets to the top of that hole. You could fill it in with wood filler but I just happen to have my hot glue right there handy. I'm using E6000 on those top wire pieces that are sticking up higher than the others. And then I can apply the wood round right on top of that. And I'm going to use some of Dollar Tree's clamps to hold that in place. And I actually let mine set up about an hour or so to make sure that E6000 set up. And it holds very nicely. Once I remove the clamps, you can actually pick this up by the bead. Um, because that E6000 really did hold it together. Now I'm going to take this piece outside and I'm going to spray paint it with my Krylon Fusion All-in-One Paint and Primer in the color Matte White. While that is drying, I am going to take one of these wood rounds from Dollar Tree that was in their Dollar Tree Plus section for $5. You guys, I was so excited to find a Dollar Tree that had a Plus section in it. I'm going to use four of those same size wood beads that I used for the handle. And I'm going to apply these to the bottom of the wood round using Gorilla Wood Glue and some hot glue. And I'm just going to place four on there, one opposite of each other to create feet for this cloche that we are making. Once all of that has dried, you want to make sure that you remove any glue strands. And I took some sandpaper to go over that to smooth it down because some of these outside edges are a little rough. And I'm just smoothing that out with the sandpaper so that I can take my Waverly Antique Wax and go over this piece. And I just like to apply it with a brush. And then I will take a wet baby wipe and just smear that in and smear that stain all around and give it a beautiful, nice finish. And it really brings out that wood grain, which is really gorgeous on these pieces that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree Plus section. I'm going to go over this entire piece, including the feet and the bottom and the outsides, and then I will let that dry completely. Now that it has dried, and my top of my cloche has dried, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can decorate it. This sits perfectly right on top of that wood round. And I'm gonna decorate it first with just a terracotta pot with some lavender and then one of the tin milk cans. I actually got that from Hobby Lobby when it was on sale. The watering can came from Dollar Tree off of one of the little stakes and then a small terracotta pot from Dollar Tree. So this is a beautiful way to display this cloche on your table outside on your covered porch, 
but I also wanted to create a little extra DIY for this and I'm starting off with two of these styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree and some of this pink baby's breath. I'm going to cut each one of these flowers off right below the flower because the stem is actually holding those petals together on there. And I have my hot glue gun set on the low temperature and I'm going to apply each one of these flower petals onto this styrofoam ball until I get it completely covered. And if you've ever done one of those DIYs where you think, you think it's going to be pretty, but that it ends up turning out way better than you imagined that it would be, well, this is one of those. It is so simple to do, but I absolutely love how this flower ball turns out. I'm just going to keep adding these on until I get completely finished with it. And then if there are any empty spaces, you can just go back in and cover those up with another flower petal. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other styrofoam ball. So I will have two of these gorgeous flower balls. And I think I used about two and a half bundles of the baby's breath from Dollar Tree. Then I'm going to lay out some wax paper and I'm going to take one of these plastic baseballs from Dollar Tree only because I didn't have a larger styrofoam ball in that shape that I wanted. So I'm just going to use the baseball. And then I'm using some Spanish moss. I got this giant bag from Hobby Lobby, but Dollar Tree does sell this green Spanish moss as well. I'm just going to pull a nice little portion out and somewhat flatten it out so that I can attach this to the plastic baseball. Once I have that worked out a little bit, I'm going to take the Mod Podge and apply it to half of this baseball. This is actually just going to keep some of those little loose strands together when this Mod Podge dries. And I'm just going to form it around the bottom half of the baseball. And then once I get that formed a little bit, it's not going to stick instantly. I'm going to um, apply the Mod Podge to the top half and just continue to form it around this ball until I get the shape that I'm going for. Now, some of the pieces are going to pop up, and if you have some really loose pieces, I'm going to take just a hint of hot glue and place that in there and then very carefully press that around to hold that greenery in place. Just be careful not to burn yourself while you're pressing this moss down with the hot glue. I'm gonna to continue to do that until I get the ball formed that I'm going for. Then I'm gonna take my scissors and give it a cute little haircut and trim any of those strands that are just sticking out and just really shape this piece up. Once I'm finished with that, I'll set it to the side and let the Mod Podge dry so it will really form to that baseball. And I'm going to do the same thing to one of those same styrofoam balls that we used with the flower. So this is the same size. I think they're the, they're not the tiniest ones, but they're like the middle size styrofoam balls. And I'm going to apply that moss just the same way I did with the baseball. And if there are little pieces that are sticking up, I can add a little bit of hot glue, but make sure that your hot glue is on the low setting. This is how it turned out, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love how this cloche turned out, and I really hope that you like it too. You'll have to let me know which way you like it decorated better. For project number two, we're going to make this cute porch sign. Starting off with two of the wood pallets. Again, you could find in the Dollar Tree Plus section for $3 a piece. After removing the labels, I'm going to remove the hangers. Now, the first set I pulled off, that staple went flying, so the second set I decided I would just cut that with my scissors before I accidentally hurt somebody or hurt myself with that staple going everywhere. <laughs> I took some Gorilla Wood glue and applied it to the end so that I could push these together. And to give it a little bit added security on the back, I'm just using some pieces of scrap paint stick. These are the one gallon stir sticks, I believe. And I'm just going to use the Gorilla Wood glue to apply those in the seams to hold these two pallets together. Using two of the five gallon paint stir sticks, and these are from Lowe's because the ones at Walmart are thinner. The ones at Lowe's are actually the same depth as the back pieces of this palette. 
I'm going to apply that with my wood glue and set it a little bit to the center, but more to the outside edge. And you'll see why later on in this project. Let that glue set up and then I can take my antique wax made by Waverly and go over this entire piece. So I did make sure that I got those palettes where you could see the back part of the sticks from the front as well as the top and bottom edges. And I'm just taking a dry paper towel and smearing that in and lightening it up just a little bit. So when you use the wood glue or whatever type of glue you're using, just make sure that you have wiped any of the excess off before you use the wax because the wax will not stick to the glue and it will just leave it a little discolored. Now I made sure I painted the back, the sides and everything because I like everything to have a nice finished look. I created a decal on my Cricut and as always, if I am able to, I leave this as a free printable on my website, which is in my description box below. So I will have that there for you. All you have to do is go over there, print it out, and then you can trace this onto your project. If you are using the Cricut yourself, I use the fonts Ink Free for Is Better On Thee and Hello Honey for Life and Porch. And Hello Honey is a free font that you can get from defont.com. To apply a hanger to the back, I'm using some of Dollar Tree's nautical rope and some hot glue and applying it to the back piece of the palette. Now, I do not recommend you hang anything very heavy on this sign when you're finished with it. If you are going to do that, please make sure you use some E6000, just a more permanent, stronger glue to hold your hanger on. Using one of Dollar Tree's hooks, I'm not going to use the hardware that it comes with because these screws are too long and they will go through the project. I'm going to use some much shorter screws that I already had on hand. Now this is where those paint sticks come into play because I wanted to make sure that everything was lined up and even on the back and it didn't set down further because you have those two middle pieces in the back of the palette holding that together. I'm just pre-drilling a little pilot hole. I'm not going through the wood, just something so that I can start my screws when I apply this hook to the back of the sign. I made sure that I had just the hook showing so that only the hook will show from the front of the sign. And then I'm gonna secure those in place with my smaller screws that I already had on hand. Now you have a really cute, porch sign that you could hang anything you wanted to on. I think this is so adorable. Um, let me know what you think of project number two. If this is your first time visiting my channel and you are enjoying today's DIYs, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you will be reminded the next time I upload a brand new video. And also don't forget to visit me on Instagram, my website, and my Pinterest board. Project number three is this gorgeous welcome to our porch sign using this beautiful wood piece from Dollar Tree Plus for $5. Yes, all the items today that we're using are from the plus section of Dollar Tree. I was so excited. We actually, my husband and I went to a different store out of town and he stopped by the Dollar Tree for me, and I was so excited to see that they had the plus section because my Dollar Tree does not have that yet. So of course, I scooped up quite a few items and we're using them in today's projects. I sanded this sign down nice and smooth, and then I took some exterior white paint, or you can use any paint. I chose to use the exterior white because I will be hanging this on my porch, and although it is covered porch, I want to make sure that it lasts for a very long time. I'm taking some black chalk paint and going around the design of the outside of this sign. And I'm very careful just trying to make sure everything stays in the lines on the top. It does have like a double part of the sign, so I painted that back part as well. Then again, using my Cricut, and again, I do have this as a free printable on my website where you can download this as a PDF, print it out, and add it to your project. This, I'm not sure, this was just a standard Cricut font or a standard computer font. Um, if I can, I will leave that in the description box below because I don't have it in front of me right now which font I used. 
using, you can use this hanger, this plant hanger from Dollar Tree, and then I'm using some eye screws that I already had on hand. Now, I do change out my chain that I'm going to hang it with, and I'll show you in just a minute. I'm going to pre-drill some holes to put my eye screws in right there at the top corners, somewhat of the corners of the sign, and try to get those evenly lined up. And it does take a little bit of effort to get them all the way through. I was just trying to go very slow and very careful not to crack this wood because these eye screws that I had on hand are pretty thick. Once I have both of these in place, I wanted to create a little extra hanger for the chains to go on to give it just a little something extra. And I'm going to use one of these wooden dowels. I think these came from Walmart. I used a much thicker one because I wanted a nice sturdy piece and then I'm using two of these smaller beads out of this large pack that I get from Amazon. Again, I have that listed in my Amazon store if you are interested and I'm using some Gorilla Wood glue to attach these to the ends and a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place till that wood glue sets up. I'm going to paint this entire piece in my black chalk paint. Now I do recommend when you are done to take this and spray it with a clear coat protectant since this will be outside. I also took the black chalk paint and painted my eye screws so that everything would match and be very cohesive. Now this is the chain that comes with the plant hanger in that package from Dollar Tree, but I'm going to use the chain that we took off of the wire baskets in the pro first project in today's video because I like the shape of these so much better. So you can just take your pliers and twist that bottom part of the chain in opposite directions so that you can open it up enough to add it to your eye screw, but you're not weakening that portion of the chain if you just pull them in opposite directions. And then you can push them back together using your pliers. We'll do that on both sides, and then I can take the top part of the chain and wrap that around the dowel. Because those clips that are on the end, my dowel is thicker because I wanted that sturdier piece. Those clips will not um, go over the dowel itself. So you can just loop it around and then clip it onto one of the other links. Or you could shorten the chain and just make it a lot smaller at the top where the loop is. But either way, I think this turned out really pretty. I absolutely love this sign. And I hope you guys like it too. Let me know what you think of the two porch signs in today's video. And now we're going to get started on our final project for today, which is this 27 inch high birdhouse. Again, at the Dollar Tree Plus section, found this for $5, and it is a very good size birdhouse. Using the antique wax, again, made by Waverly, I'm very carefully going to paint the entire roof, starting from the underside of each section of the roof. And again, wiping that off with a paper towel to lighten it up. You can make it as dark as you want it, but I kind of wanted everything to match. And I'm going to go over just the entire roof as well as those underneath pieces and let that completely dry before I paint the birdhouse itself. And this is just gorgeous. I love the way that wood grain comes out. Taking a bamboo cutting board from Dollar Tree, we're going to attach the birdhouse to the, all the way to the back of the cutting board, and I'm just measuring to make sure I have equal distance on each side, and that is flush in the back. Then I can make my mark with my pencil so I will know exactly where to place this after I glue it down, or once I glue it down. Using some E6000, just because this cutting board, you know, it has a little bit of a very smooth feel to it, it's not, you know, completely raw wood. I wanted to make sure that it would stay together, so I'm using the E6000 rather than wood glue. And then I'm also using some hot glue to hold it in place. Very carefully, I'm going to give it two coats of my exterior white paint. Again, you will want to make sure you put a protectant on this if you have it out in the weather. I'm going to have mine on a covered porch, but you do want it to have that protective coating so that it will last for a very long time. 
using this sign from Dollar Tree. I went over this with some sandpaper because it's not real wood and I wanted to make sure that my paint adheres to it very well. And this took, I think, two coats and then so a few little spots took an extra coat just to cover up that dark green. Using another bamboo cutting board, we're gonna paint that in the same white color. And again, I painted all of these pieces, the entire pieces, except for that long sign. I didn't paint too much. I only put one coat on the ends because you're not gonna see those end pieces. I measured this to the center of the cutting board and made a mark with my pencil so I know exactly where to place this sign when I glue it down. And I did the exact same thing on the bottom part of the cutting board that has the birdhouse on it using the other end of the sign to make sure I could find the center. Now that I have my marks in place, I'm gonna set that all to the side and use four of the tumbling tower pieces and then two of those wood square pieces that you can get from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna glue two of the tumbling tower pieces end to end and another set of two in the exact same way. And then I can add my square pieces to the top and bottom of one end. And this is where the tumbling tower pieces are um, like they're standing up like a skinnier side. You'll see in just a minute what I'm talking about. We're creating some little flower boxes to go beside our birdhouse. And I'm just applying all of this together with some hot glue. And then you want to make sure you wipe all of that glue off before you use your antique wax. Again, because that wax will not stick to the glue. So I created two of these so there would be two flower boxes that we can attach after they're dry right there on top of the cutting board, one on each side of the birdhouse. And then it just really brings out the roof color since this is the same color. And then I can glue those down in place using some hot glue. And then to give it a little bit of greenery, I'm gonna use some boxwood greenery from Walmart. And I'm clipping off just the top little pieces, like a little tiny piece of the branch, and I'm hot gluing that down until I get those flower boxes nice and full. And then add a little leaf here or there just to make sure they're nice and full on both sides. Once I have all of that done, we can assemble this piece and I'm gonna be using some E6000 again and some hot glue. So I'm putting a really, really good amount of that E6000 right in the center. And then I'll go around that with my hot glue. I try not to mix them together because they don't seem to work very well if you put the hot glue and the E6000 together. I'm gonna hold that up under the birdhouse, let the hot glue set up which is just gonna take a minute or two, and then we can add the other cutting board to the bottom, which is now gonna be the base of our birdhouse. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to let your E6000 set up for several hours before you put this outside to make sure everything's nice and sturdy. To give it a little add extra cuteness, I'm gonna take one of these decorative wheelbarrows that you can find at Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna set mine on the front but you could use a dab of E6000 to hold it in place. Wow, this birdhouse turned out so beautiful. I absolutely love how this one turned out. If you have a favorite, I would love to know which one is your favorite. Please let me know in the comments down below. And now I will show you how I styled each of these on my covered porch. Thanks you guys so much for watching. Please take care and I'll see you next time. And now for how they look on my porch. I absolutely love how the birdhouse turned out and the centerpiece on the coffee table. I have each of the signs, one on each side of my sliding door. I have these hanging up with some vinyl siding clips, which I have listed in my Amazon store if you're interested. But I love how all of these projects turned out. Thank you guys.